Joining me now is Donald Heinbeck. He is a witness to this collapse. Uh, Donald, thank you for being with us. I imagine this has been just such an emotional and difficult day for you and so many others in this community. Tell us a bit about what you saw and heard this morning. Uh, good morning. Um, we were awakened by what sounded like a rolling thunder coming through, and it, it felt like an earthquake. When the bridge came down, it did uh, crash into the water, and it made... Uh, quite a noise, and it did create a, a vibration that went through the community. This community where I live is the closest community to the bridge. So it's actually right behind me. Um, and I had previously been a chief of operations in Baltimore City for the fire department. So I turned on my uh, radio and found out where the incident uh, was going on. And I, I went to the, to the scene where the command post was being set up to watch that uh, and Sue, and um, uh, just got caught up in the watch and that. But as far as the impact, a lot of the people here can't get to work uh, over the Key Bridge, and they're going to have to take detours uh, several miles out of their normal route. I just wonder, especially because of your experience with the fire department, Donald, have you seen anything like this before? Uh, several times uh, we had a, a train explosion and derailment in the Howard Street Tunnel in downtown Baltimore uh, some years back. Uh, and that created an um, uh, impact on the economic uh, ability of the, of the city. But uh, this, this is a whole different animal and um, yet very serious. It's, it's, but it's something that we actually train for. We train for things like this and the uh, multi-agency response and the way the teams came together was very impressive, very impressive. And can you talk about how the community is responding? I imagine, you know, it must be quite a frantic feeling to wake up and to see and hear about something like this, as you say, just down the road from your home. Well, we depend on the media to help us out and to tell us the uh, best routes to take uh, to uh, detour around the, uh, the emergency up there. And um, I, I think the media's done a pretty good job on that, having you know, been been through these experiences before, but the media played a, a big part in getting the information out to the folks who have to go to work. So uh, I think it's, even though it's it's really a, a disaster up there, uh, I think in, people are dealing with it uh, in a very reasonable way, responsible way, and in many ways, the ways that we're trained to deal with things. And, you know, you mentioned a bit about the location here. I want to ask more about that. There is the bridge. There is also the port. These two are very, as I understand, important areas, not just to the local community, but the greater economy. Yeah, so we have uh, two cruise ships that go in and out of Baltimore. So there are two cruise ships that are coming back to where we're not sure. Uh, mm -hmm. And the backup, the um, marine traffic has already taken place. Uh, if you go onto any of the marine mapping uh, sites, you'll see where the the um, ships are just backing up in the bay. They have to make turns, go back to another port. So it's and rails, rail lines are affected, and hazmat. Uh, the hazmats that are going through the Baltimore area have to take a detour uh, around the Baltimore Beltway as opposed to going over the Key Bridge. So that puts a lot of time and expense into their um, operations. And I wonder, Donald, because you seem like you're very active in the community. You said you have this experience with the fire department. You know, did people come out of their homes in the middle of the night when this happened? Were you getting phone calls? Walk me through what was happening as soon as you found out. Well, I guess I'm an exception to the rule. I, I have a, a radio that I can listen to on, mm -hmm. on the fire. So I, I know exactly where to go. But it's kind of in a remote area as as far as uh, residences are concerned. Uh, okay. It's an industrial area. Uh, on this side, now this is the um, one that would be the south or west side, Anne Arundel County. But Baltimore County is a little different. It may be uh, more residential on that side. But again, Baltimore County is severely impacted. The uh, Old Spires Point has been recently developed with a lot of uh, industry. So all those workers, many of them are affected adversely with their um, travel in, in, in the morning or in the afternoon. I just so, wonder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Donald, I just wonder before we let you go, how you feel looking at this happen? I mean, 
Miles away, you look at these dramatic images and it is just so shocking to your core. How does it feel to just be so close to something like this? Well, I, again, I have a different perspective. I look at it, I look at it from someone who's been trained to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And I was impressed with the response and the way people came together. And I look at things like the media. Again, the media's been doing a great job in keeping us informed. So as much as we can do to mitigate the problems associated with the incident, I think we're doing okay. But again, the investigation has to go forward to find out what happened and how we can prevent situations like this from occurring again. Mm -hmm. it's just, we, we just can't have these things happen. Absolutely. Donald, thank you so much for sharing your time with us.